Victor, congratulations. Um, how did you and Alan, I know he was originally going to caddy for Matthew. What happened and how did you two get hooked up? Was it your idea or how did he call you? Or? Uh, it was uh, obviously Matt got injured. His wrist was kind of hurting and I uh, decided to just not play the tournament. And um, coach emailed me about, okay, if I had found a caddy because he knew that I didn't have a caddy at the time. And uh, he wondered if that still was the case and uh, just offered a caddy for me. And uh, so, yeah, I knew I knew he's he's got a lot of experience. So I, I said yes. What was that relationship like during the event? Did he really help you with a lot of things? Or yeah, I mean he he's seen me play uh, for Oklahoma State for two years now. Um, he knows my game very well, and uh, we're we're on the same page in terms of picking the right clubs and kind of seeing the right shots. And um, him having played the ATT a little. Earlier in his career, um, like he he know he knows he knows the course uh, well as well. So yeah, I mean we we were just on the same track the the whole tournament, which uh, which makes it a lot easier to to make the right decisions. You talked about um, during the post game that you weren't playing very well leading into that. You got that one video that people saw where you're working on your stopping and starting your swing. What changed? How did you get get in the groove right before the amateur? Uh, yeah, I mean, I played a lot this summer, and I didn't feel like I could, you know, have a little time where, where I could work on my game. I was just not playing very well, but I still had to go to the next tournament and trying to perform as well as I could, uh, which was a little. Uh, it, it was a lot. I had a lot of fun. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of playing, uh, fun playing sweet courses. Uh, and good com competitions, but you'd like to kind of take a week off and work on your game. And um, I had three or four days where I was going into the European Tour event where I didn't feel like my game was looking very good at all. So uh, I was struggling with the driver with a big slice, and I was just doing a drill, which was that pause drill. So I just decided, okay, I'm just going to use that one for, for that tournament. And um, after that event, I had a couple of weeks before the USAM, so that's when I decided to, you know, not do it anymore, and I could start working on uh, my game again. Yeah. So it clicked in right before the AM for you? Not, or? not really. No. Uh, I was still, you know, not not very confident going into it, but I, I started seeing some good shots during the week, and um, I just got my mind into a mode where. You know, you're just seeing the fairway, you're just seeing the green and trying to make the putts, not really thinking about, okay, I have to hit a high draw here where I'm feeling this in my arms and the swing. Like, it was just, okay, just execute the shot and just hit it where you need to hit it. Can you talk us through hole number four, the decision to make that shot, and then how much you think that kind of set the tone because you never relinquished the, the lead after that hole? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I won the first hole. I, I'm assuming you're talking about the final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Number four, hitting it down yeah. the, the ice plant. Yeah, so I won the first hole, and then I, I gave away the second hole, um, pretty much making a double from the greenside bunker. Um, and then um, we tied number three. So I, it was it was kind of a slow start. And um, when I also hit that bad drive on four to, to put myself in the ice plant, I was kind of thinking, mm, this isn't the greatest start. But then um, just – Seeing the ball when I approached the kind of the cliff or the embankment, I saw I had a pretty good lie, and I just just decided to go down there and and see if uh, it was possible to hit from. And um, Coach Bratton gave me the line, and I I went up and down a couple times to kind of gauge how how far it was, and um, yeah, then I just hit it, and yeah, when <laughs> it ended up being a lot better than uh, I expected, and. Um, you know, it's hard to say how much a shot like that really helps you out, but I at least try to tell myself that okay, this is this is where it starts. Okay, now we're like this is what I needed to to make a bunch of birdies and uh, put myself up ahead. And uh, yeah, it certainly didn't hurt. What was? It? Can you give us a sort of short version of how you ended up at Oklahoma State? How you first connected with? with uh, the university? Mm. Uh, I played a bunch of tournaments growing up in, in Europe, and Coach Bratton came to a few of them. 
uh, mainly the European Boys Team Championships. And it was in Scotland. I saw him the first time in 2012, I believe. And he mainly came over there to, to visit with uh, or to watch Chris Ventura, uh, who just graduated. And I happened to play behind him. And um, he must have liked what he saw. And he kind of kept an eye out for me as the years went by. And uh, when I was old enough, he, he reached out. And um, I came for a visit over here along with three other schools and just decided that this was the right fit for me. Uh, TCU, Texas Tech, and Tennessee. How much did Chris's presence here influence your decision? Uh, I, I'd say a lot. Um, I didn't know him like really well go, uh, going into the school here. Uh, I obviously knew he was, and we went to the same high school, but he was traveling a bunch, so I didn't know him that well. But uh, I remember coming from for a visit here, and he was going to – dropped me off by the hotel I was staying at. And um, we just ended up sitting in the car talking for like two hours. And just, I was asking questions and he was really nice with his time. And just, y you could tell that he had a lot of fun just answering the questions. And uh, that, I'd say like that was one of the, the things that really uh, got me to, to go to the school. Cause it was just to hear kind of him talk about it. Cause I knew him a little bit. It wasn't like I was just hearing from a random guy on the team that I, I didn't know before. So I, I could I could tell that, okay, we were looking at things the same way and, um, yeah, and that it was being honest. You, you were asked after the finals about who, who was the greatest Norwegian golfer and whatnot. Have you thought about the potential role that you could now play with the young golfers being the first, not only Norwegian, but Scandinavian as a whole to win the U.S. Amateur and, and how maybe those younger golfers like you looked up to, to others, may now be looking up to you? Yeah, uh, I haven't thought about it much. Um, if, if I can inspire some people, that's, that's awesome. But that's not my main focus, especially now I'm still a junior in college. Uh, so, I mean, I, I'm just trying to get better, and which I need to be in order to, to reach my goals. So uh, there's still a long way ahead, and... Um, yeah, if I can inspire some people along the way, that's that's really cool. That semifinal match against Cole Hammer, you seem to have a little extra look in your eye, maybe like the first or final round of the NCAA. He was getting a lot of the publicity. Was there a little extra incentive for you in that match? Or? Uh, not because of that. It was mostly I knew he was probably the, the hottest player um, still left in the tournament, and I knew that he was playing well, and I knew it was going to be a good match. So it, it just really focused me, and I, I just knew I, I had to bring my A game. And, um, yeah, after, after I started rolling in some putts, uh, like, I, ju I just felt good, and I was, yeah, kind of in the zone. So, yeah. How awkward was that first match against teammate Hayden? Yeah, it was a little awkward. Um, obviously, with him losing against Chris Ventura last year with Coach Bratton on the bag, uh, I'm sure it was even more awkward for him, but um, you know, it's it's a tournament. Yeah, you you just gotta kind of think about it, um, like you're just playing just someone else, um, and then hopefully at the end of the day you can kind of put it past you and yeah, get back to normal. Mentally, is that maybe the toughest match for you out there? Honestly, I'd I'd say my uh, my third match was the toughest one. Um, even though it wasn't it wasn't as close as it was with Hayden, but going into the the match, that was the one that was toughest for me, I'd say, because I played a very good friend of mine. I've I've known in almost half my life, uh, the other Norwegian in the field, Christopher Reiten, and um, yeah, we've we've played a bunch of golf together, and I know his game very well, and um, yeah, I, I I'd, I'd say that one was the the tougher one um, going into the the match. Is he over here playing somewhere? He went to Texas for a semester and then now he's just playing amateur golf. Was it difficult to block out if you're coming down the stretch in the semis I'm going to lock up a spot in the Masters and, and the Open and be right back here. Did you allow yourself to even think about that or is that anything that even entered your mind at that mm, point? Uh, yeah, going into the match I, I was thinking that. Um, 
Like I was during the week, I was really nervous in between the matches, but then kind of when it started and I, I, in almost every match I got off to a good start. So that kind of eased my nerves a little bit. Um, so I'd say after the first few holes, I was like, I was just kind of in the moment. And, um, but at the end, uh, after I made a nice putt on 14 to kind of to stay one up and he hit it in the bunker on 15 and, uh, I won the hole with a birdie there. That's when I kind of thought, okay, close this one out now. And then punching that ticket to Augusta and Pebble Beach for next year. So, yeah. How much do you feel the tournament out here just a few months earlier, winning that uh, in match play, obviously, as well, help prepare you for the U.S. Amateur being already having experienced kind of the pressures of the moment? Mm, uh, yeah, I felt the pressure way more at the national championship. Um, it's just a bunch more people, or a lot of more people, or yeah, so many more people out there, and um, you know, kind of going into the tournament being ranked number one and favorites, and because uh, we we had an unbelievable season last year, and being at the home course, everyone were kind of expecting that you were going to win, so that I mean, no one, even though I, I've played some good golf, no one was really expecting me to win the U.S. Amateur. So uh, I kind of went under the radar a little bit. Um, but I, I'd say just, yeah, um, being under that pressure that we were at the national championship and then performing as well as we did, that, that was a very good lesson for us. Um, yeah, and especially for me going in to tournament last week. Did you have anyone that you talked to like during the, the amateur that you kind of like with or kind of went through stuff with that kind of helped you keep a level head, not get lost in it? Um, not really. Uh, I mean, me and Coach Bratton talked a lot just about, you know, uh, he was reminiscing a little bit about when he and Peter uh, won. So uh, it was just kind of cool to hear his experiences. And But mainly, I mean, I, I knew what to do. I mean, um, yes, your mind is going to go go to places where uh, you, it probably shouldn't be, but then when it's time to play golf, it's time to play golf. And um, yeah, so I, I, didn't, I didn't really feel like I need to, needed someone to tell me what I needed to do, if that makes sense. I apologize I've been asking before, but uh, you just got here. You were so dominating the way you won. I mean, they were blowout fashion. I mean, was there a feeling going in that you were just playing some of your best golf? turned out that way? I mean, just your thoughts on winning by such wide margins? Um, well, I, I felt like it, it, it kind of just ended up that way. And um, those two matches where I won seven up, um, I ob obviously played very well. But my opponents didn't have their best stuff. And um, I don't know. I mean, I, I had been hitting it pretty solid throughout the week. And I was hitting a bunch of greens. The only difference was just that I was making a bunch of putts too, just hole after hole after hole. And then uh, when you when you start seeing, especially for me, I'm a very streaky putter. Um, when I just start seeing the putts drop, I just feel really confident. No matter how far away I am, I still think I can make the putt. And uh, yeah, I just ended up making a bunch of putts and never looked back. I was said you just didn't want to. You were trying to keep him back the ball so much. <laughs> yeah, I did him a favor too. <laughs> Did you change your expectations of yourself going forward and what's possible? Um, I haven't actually thought about that. Um, probably a little unconsciously. Um, but I still, you know, I'm. I, I try to not like trick myself. Um, it's not like I'm showing up to every tournament and then. Obviously, I want to win every tournament, but it's probably not going to happen that I'm going to win every single tournament that I play. And uh, just because I won the U.S. Amateur doesn't mean that my game has completely changed. It's it's still my same game. Um, so I, I still need to work on the stuff I'm working on. Um, so I I mean I that's a good question. Uh, you know, I, if I just continue to get better every day and work on the stuff that I have been working on. It's going to take care of itself. I loved your Tiger Who comment. Is your roommate kind of sense of humor rubbing off on you a little bit? Or? 
Uh, no, that was 100% spontaneous. I <laughs> uh, did not think about that at all. <laughs> well, you got a team with so many guys. I mean, this goes back to the NCAAs that on any given day, it could be you, it could be Ekro, it could be him. You guys kind of push each other? Yeah, for sure. Um, after, you know, Sack Boshu won the Canadian Amateur uh, this year as well. He he did so last year. And Ekro just had a phenomenal summer, finished in second in the Pac Coast. And, um, Hayden won a tournament, and uh, Wolf's obviously a great player. Um, so it was just like it, it's cool to see those guys that you practice with every day, and you see those those guys perform well uh, during the summer, and um, it, you know it just gives you more confidence knowing that okay, I've I beat you so and so many times uh, when we're practicing at Carson, and then you you see them them doing good things, and then you're thinking okay. Well, my good game is probably just around the corner, and uh, there's no reason why that couldn't or that shouldn't be me standing with a trophy. How nice was it seeing all the OSU alums, you know, tweeting about you and stuff like that? Yeah, I, I don't have a Twitter, but uh, uh, people told me or showed me a little bit about okay, this guy wrote wrote this about you, and um, that's always re obviously really really nice. Um, of them to take the time and congratulate me, even though I might not know him that well. But uh, yeah, that that that's really cool, and that made it kind of sink in a little bit more. That wow, that was that was a pretty big deal. A young guy that didn't have a Twitter, I mean, that might be a story itself. <laughs> How'd that happen? Uh, so I don't know. I just, uh, I guess when I was growing up, it wasn't that big in Norway. Like a lot of my friends growing up didn't have Twitter. Um, I don't know, and then I just. Yeah, didn't get one. I feel like I'd just be lost in it. Just end up sitting there all day, tweeting. <laughs> yeah, Probably, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Victor, when did you make the decision you wanted to come to the U.S. to go to college and play golf? When did that first enter your mind? Um, it was pretty early, I'd say, uh, relatively or relative to my other uh, golf friends. Um, I'd say it's probably before high school. Uh, I remember my mom telling me that he or she talked to uh, a couple of her friends that they knew someone that got a free scholarship in the U.S. because they were good at golf, and that kind of planted the seed in my head. And as I got older and got better and just got to know a little bit more about things, I just thought that okay, you know, you see all those players, Ricky Fowler, uh, just. Pretty much everyone that's out there on the tour right now, they're, uh, they went to college and uh, they they learned to win there or play good there, and then that kind of opened doors, and that's that's kind of how like I thought about it. Okay, if I can go there and get better, and if I do well in college, that means that you know I'm I'm getting ready for the PJ Tour, the the pro golf, because um, a lot of my friends were right after high school they they turn pro and play the Nordic League and then go up to the Challenge Tour, um, which is which is very easy if you if you live in Norway or in Europe. It's it's very easy, but I I felt like I needed to go out of my comfort zone and experience some other stuff. You mentioned after the finals that you weren't sure if your folks had to, to watch because of the time difference. What was the the conversation like? The phone call, calling them as U.S. Amateur Champion. What was their reaction? Yeah, I mean they were just proud. I mean. Uh, it just like congrats, and that was really cool to watch. Um, but yeah, they 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 were more tired because they stayed up all night pretty much. But uh, no, I mean it was it was nice. It felt good. Are, are they looking forward to the opportunity of seeing you at the the Open Championships? Did you get an exemption over uh, over there? Yeah, I mean it, it's still a long time until then, and I think we're all just trying to let it all sink in still and uh, kind of take it as it goes. How chaotic has this week been for you? Because you started up school as soon as you, you come back. Yeah. Um, yeah, my, my phone definitely blew up. Uh, and, um, yeah, I've gotten a lot of messages saying, okay, hey, we want to talk to you about this. And, like, it, yeah, I didn't think so or that many people would would reach out and say congrats or, um, yeah, whatever whatever it was. Um so it's it's been hectic and uh, almost a little scary how 
uh, life changing it is. A kid that grew, grew up playing golf in the United States would have sort of an iconic view of Pebble Beach. What was uh, what was it for you, and like how much did you know about the course when you were younger, and then when did you start to realize what a big deal that that place is up here? Yeah, I mean, I kn I knew it was a pretty special place with uh, you know all the majors that they've hosted out there and just all the tournaments in general. Um, I wasn't so familiar with all the views. Uh, I'd I'd play the game sometimes on the Tiger Woods uh, PlayStation game, uh, but it doesn't really do it justice. Um, but then after coming and playing the Carmel Cup my freshman year, that's when um, I kind of got a, you know, I got a real look at it and uh, made me realize how special special it is. And uh, yeah, to to win it at Pebble Beach, it's yeah, it's uh, can't get much better than that. When you were out there, you touched on how it's hard to lose all the pictures of everybody and the trophies and the legacy and all that. You have kind of had two now legacy defining moments yourself with NCAAs and now this. Has that now sunk in a little bit further kind of as your place in Oklahoma State golf? I, I haven't had much time to think about that, but um, hopefully after I graduate and kind of look back at it, I can you know look at myself on the wall there and um, you know that that's kind of I, I think that's when I'm going to cherish it more. Um, you know I'm still in school. I, I want to build on the the stuff that I've already achieved, but uh, to think about that I've kind of you know I've I have a couple of uh, accolades to put on there. That's that's really cool, and uh, it's motivating to kind of just keep it going. After a whirlwind summer like this, one thing you guys have never done here is win back-to-back -back national championships. And I know you've talked about that a lot already internally. I'm sure. Is yeah. That, is that the goal for this year? Yeah, for sure. Um, and I think we still have a really good team this year, so there's no reason we uh, we can't go undefeated. Um, we had a really good good year last year, um, and I, I think we're going to be really good this year as well. Uh, now, that doesn't mean it's a bad season if we don't go undefeated, but uh, uh, I, I think you got to keep setting bold goals, and if you're playing well, and I, I think we can accomplish them. So, um, yeah, if we can if we can go back to back, that'd be that'd be something real special. Where's the, uh, the trophy? Is it sitting in between? The two Canadian amateurs by your teammate, or? Uh, well, uh, the USGA are shipping it to me, so I'll, I'll get it pretty soon. I'll see. I'll see what I'll do with it. Probably keep it in bed for a couple weeks.